it started as any normal day would in any normal household. I went off to work and Kate was going to go and take the dog for a walk. And then I had to go off to the local supermarket. And I remember coming out and hearing all these sirens going off. And I was thinking, oh, there's been an awful accident somewhere. There are a lot of emergency services. There are ambulance, police, fire. We landed at a road junction. We could see a car and it had been secured by the fire service. We were most concerned the fact that she had serious head and serious chest injury. I knew that it was really, really bad and I didn't think when I got there that she would still be with me. And they said they loaded me onto the helicopter twice, but twice I flatlined and they had to get me off, get my heart going and then reposition me on the aircraft for the flight to um, Addenbrooke's. And I just couldn't believe that this could happen in such a short space of time, really. You know, you go out the door saying goodbye, see you for lunch, and the next thing I'm looking at her on, on a trolley in an A&E ward, really. The end of the world. Well, you think it is at that moment in time, because they were preparing me for the worst all the time. All I remember is waking up in the hospital one day and with a tracheostomy in and not remembering anything. She was on the neurocritical care unit ward just after an hour from the accident happening. And that was down to the air ambulance. If it wasn't for them, I would never have made it. They call it the golden hour. If they can get her in that hospital within that hour, she has a much better chance of recovery to whatever degree. And without them, she wouldn't have made it, definitely. I think it was vital to the recovery that she's um, showing now that we got there so quickly, but the level of medicine that we're able to offer the types of patient and with serious head injuries and serious chest injuries, well, the sooner we can get there, the better, really. I was in hospital in total for 12 months. The bad days, they're undescribable. I mean, it scares me to think that I thought like this, but if this is me for the rest of my life, I thought, I don't want to be here. Considering when I come out of my coma, I couldn't speak for three months and then I couldn't, had no coordination. Whereas now I'm walking, I got told I'd never walk, I'd be bed bound for the rest of my life. And I said, you know what? Someone saved me for a reason. So these legs will work and hooray, they finally do. I can walk little distances, so it's brilliant. Who knows where the finish line is? I don't believe there is one. So you just got to keep going and running. Maybe one day I will run. For people watching this video, probably like us as a family, you see it up in the air, you, you hear about it. We had no idea that it wasn't a government funded service. You just assume that this is something that is provided by the government. And it wasn't until we spoke to these people after the accident and realise that it's totally a charity. I can never ever thank them enough because if it wasn't for them I would not be here. They do the things that the normal ambulances can't do. You know from here to Addenbrooke's by car would have taken an hour at least. She was up there in 10 minutes in that air ambulance. Makes a huge difference. But every little penny that we can give, even if it's just £10 or £100, all helps. And we will carry on. And I know that Kate will carry on. And she just wants to pay something back to them for her life. And I think that's how we feel as a family. Because if it can happen to us, it can happen to anyone. And that's the thing.